80% of your users will find value from 20% of your features. Apple, for example, will tell you that your iPad can read, write, draw, stream. You can make movies with this, you can make music. And this is how I use mine on a daily basis. My kettle has five temperature modes built into it to heat water as well, but I only use one mode daily. Now, don't get me wrong, I do use this iPad to do other things other than stream my favorite shows, and I do use that kettle on the other modes sometimes, other than that one main mode to make coffee. But statistically, these are the main things that I actually do regularly. So for the iPad and the kettle, these are my 20% when it comes to what I actually do with that product regularly. The 8020 rule can help startups to understand what's essential to build. Use your limited amount of money, resources, and engineers to build something minimal that can bring the maximum value to your users. Offering too many features could actually cause your users feature fatigue, but it might also confuse your internal team in terms of the direction you're leading them, and you're gonna be exhausting them, and then at the end of the day, you're just gonna end up shipping something that's confusing. The Arc browser, however, is not a minimal product. It's jam-packed with features all over the place, and most first-time users feel a sense of confusion the first time they use it. But it still benefits from the 80-20 rule. Let's talk about it. This is not a review, but I did experimentally switch my default browser to the Arc browser last week. I was traveling to New York City for a work trip, and I wanted to see how it would feel like to use it on the road. And my overall experience was actually pretty overwhelming. And I wasn't sure what I was looking at. The tab is like on the left section. The URL bar was somewhere else. Split view, um, the easel, the notes app. I mean, there was so much going on. And on the phone too, the user interaction was not too familiar to me. But there was one feature on the mobile phone app that kind of got me hooked. And that was the Browse For Me feature. And this was a feature that was released literally a week before I started using the browser. This feature will basically take your question and it will scrape the internet for you and compile the results in a beautifully built web page so that you don't have to go look for things for yourself. And it contains relevant links and it contains relevant context enough so that you you literally don't need to do anything else after that page is generated for you. It contains all the information that you need. Like for example, my coworkers and I were in Soho in New York City and we were hungry and all I had to do was just type best restaurants in Chinatown Reddit and then I clicked on browse for me and it pulled a list of restaurants for me based off of my search and we were able to get to a great restaurant and I didn't have to spend some time, freeze my fingers off while browsing Reddit and understanding the nuances. Browse for me just did all of that for me in a compiled page. It was amazing. By the way, we went to Walk Walk. We loved it. I also wanted to learn about some pop culture news that was happening about one of my favorite artists uh, while I was at work, but I knew that it was sort of a scandalous news article. So Browse for me just helped compile enough relevant information so that I would be able to understand what was going on with that person. And that's it. I just looked at the information. I was like, great, cool, moving on. We were also in Brooklyn and we were looking for bars and just using the Browse For Me feature, compiled a bunch of bars that I could visit and boom, easy. That feature has me hooked so much that even though I don't think about the Arc browser as my default browser, if I have to do something general, when it comes to having a question that probably is answered on the internet somewhere, the Browse For Me feature definitely pops in my head and I definitely pull out my phone to look up that specific question using the Browse For Me feature. This phenomenon with the Arc browser, where people choose to make this their default browser, is I think why people choose to stay by it. You have this one feature that you really enjoy about the browser, so you choose to adopt the entire ecosystem so that this one feature can actually become part of your daily workflow. I actually learned about the Arc browser from David Immel from the Waveform podcast, and this is his reason for why he chose to make it his default browser. Um, it is a browser that basically is made for people who are really bad at tab management, like me. But uh, it has a lot of, uh, it has honestly a ton of different features that I don't even fully utilize. Um, but the main feature is that you have a bunch of pinned tabs that are here that never really go away. And the funny thing is I was listening to the audio version of a podcast. So a lot of these things went over my head. I just knew about the fact that he loved the Arc browser. And I didn't know about the features that he was talking about, and I didn't end up using any of these features. But the features that I loved ended up helping me in my workflow. And other users might rely more on the notes feature, others might rely on the easel feature, others might even love the boost feature. 
And I don't use these, but other users might have been hooked onto this platform because of these features. The really cool part about finding a product as complex as the Arc browser is that you can find your 20% slice. You can find that killer feature that you really benefit from, and that's why you set it as your default browser. Like for example, I came in at this point in time and the Browse For Me feature helped me get hooked to the platform. And there's like so many more features that I have left to discover and to implement into my workflow. So I was wondering how they managed to do this. Why is it that they're so feature packed and yet I was able to find something for myself. And there is a few reasons for that beyond the fact that they have an amazing engineering team. And one of them is that they push out software updates and bug fixes every two weeks. So when I first got the browser, I had the browse for me feature. Two weeks later, I got the tidy tabs on the Mac app and that also became helpful for me. So in the cycle of a year, 12 months, 24 cycles, that gives Arc Browser 24 different opportunities to attract 24 different crowds of people with these new features. Whether you're a more creative person or whether you're a more email person, whether you use Figma more, whether you use Canva more, whether Pinteresting shopping is your main thing. The different features that can attract different types of users. There's also the thing where a lot of these features are misunderstood, but they do quite a good job at explaining it if you're looking for answers. Like, for example, I didn't understand the boost feature. The boost feature allows users to customize a web page by editing the font, changing the colors, or maybe even zapping away buttons. And I didn't quite understand who this would be bringing value to. Like, I watched this college student who was using his college portal, but the portal was not really well built. And he was just using the boost feature to be able to zap away a few things and make his workflow better while he's on his college portal. Seeing that use case made me realize how this feature might come in handy for me at some point down the line. And it might not fit into my 20% of features that I use daily, but it's something to keep in my mind about this complex product overall. Now, I can keep talking about this abundance of features and why it's awesome, but there is a lot of issues that comes with this love for maximalism. Arc Browser is reinventing the wheel because they're just creating a new browser and they're pretty aware of it. They know that people enjoy familiarity and for people to go from downloading the product to setting it to their default browser, their users need to feel familiar about browsing the internet with the Arc Browser. But the Arc Browser is very far from familiar. Using Arc Browser to do basic tasks is like playing Elden Ring. The controls are unfamiliar. I have to figure out what's going on on my screen first. To do things that seem basic in other games, I have to really understand how this current game works, but just replace game with this new browser. So for example, I was using split screen and on one side of the screen, I had a podcast going on and on the other side of the screen, I had Notion going on. And at some point I wanted the podcast to go away so that I could focus my whole screen on the Notion page. But when I clicked on X, it just closed my entire podcast. Like the whole tab got closed rather than it just minimizing to its default status of just running in another tab. It was quite odd. And later I figured out that you could create a shortcut to unsplit a tab, but that was very unfamiliar. I just saw while filming this that there was an unsplit button now, like two weeks after using this browser. Another example is that the Mac has also the split feature where you can bring two windows together and they're just split in the middle. And if I full screen a video on one end, it won't take the whole screen, it will just full screen in the split window. But because I'm used to the familiarity of a user experience on my Mac, now the split feature on the Arc browser doesn't work the same way and that's just non-consistent. It's also not a perfect product. For example, Adblock is built in within the browser. So I was watching the bear on Hulu and as soon as the first ad hit, it just went black until I got an error code. And my first thought was that it was probably because of the built-in ad block. So I was trying to find the settings of the ad block to try to maybe disable it temporarily. I would just run through the ad, let me just watch the show. But I couldn't find the settings. I still don't know where the ad block settings are to this day. So just doing a simple action as watching entertainment on my laptop and not being able to finish my show made me kind of lose it. And had I not been doing this for a video, for example, 
I would have not gone through the whole experience of Yog browser. They also have another new feature called Instant Search that came alongside the Browse feature, and Instant Search is available on the laptop version of our browser. It's supposed to save you a few clicks from browsing Google Search before you find a result by just leading you directly to where the information is. But most of the times, I find it to just be redirecting me to websites like Wikipedia, where I'm just lost for what I'm trying to look because of the amount of information that I'm being fed to. So rather than saving me a few clicks and getting context from the Google search result page, I'm just being forced to do free clicks by getting to Wikipedia, having to click back, actually clicking a normal Google search, browsing the Google search page, and then getting to the information that I was seeking. Like things like the instant feature, I feel like are not really well thought of because you're ignoring the purpose and the context that you get from a regular Google search. It gives you the information about what a page might contain and whether you might get value from clicking it. The, the mini browser also, wh why is the user experience and user interface on the mini browser different from the main app? I'm so confused by that. Like, literally, you're trying to familiarize me with a user experience on one end, and then with a mini browser, it just throws a wrench into it to try to revert back to the default state. And that was a little confusing. So clearly, there is a lot of frustration that comes with being a new user to the Yog browser. And it's a hill to climb. It's pretty steep. And using a browser to interact with the internet is such an essential part of being on the internet. Like, can I really recommend this to random people? Can I recommend this to my coworkers, to my parents, to my siblings? Do I think that they can find what the 20% will be from this product for them? I'm not really sure because it's such a complex product and browsing the internet is also kind of complex and it differs from people to people. I actually know that the company is trying to figure out how to be better at going from hearing about the Arc browser to making it your default browser. Like that whole pipeline, they're thinking about it. They released a video on YouTube. It starts when someone hears about Arc for the first time and then it ends with someone switches to Arc as their default browser and never leaves. And there are a lot of steps in between that. Honestly, in retrospect, I'm, I'm, I'm embellishing a little bit, but I gave him an answer of, Mike, we don't focus on that at the browser company. That's what Facebook growth PMs do. At the browser company, we make excellent product with high craft and a lot of heart in it. And we'll figure out all the optimizations later. But I was thinking, what are some things that actually can be done? And here are some of the things that I wanted to have throughout my first week experience of the Arc browser. The first one being, I wanted a lot of the search features to be available throughout the command T feature. So when the search tab pops up, if I'm looking for the ad block settings, I want to just be able to type ad block. And it shows me the settings that could help fix that specific issue. And it is available for some features on the Arc browser, but it doesn't seem like it's available for a lot of it. I would also like to have a little GPT genie around there somewhere, like a little clippy like dude who's around there. And if I'm trying to do something, but I'm not quite sure how it works on the Arc browser, I can just ask it directly. That would probably be really helpful for at least me, because I'm still trying to figure out how to implement the easel and notes into my workflow. but. I'm not quite sure what the shortcuts are or what I can do in that moment. So having a little guy can just knock on the door and tell them to give me instructions on how to do something specific with the Arc browser would really help. I do know that they also try to teach new users through the onboarding process about their features and stuff, but it's quite unreasonable to expect users to retain what this product is about because it's so unfamiliar when you just get prompted into this new browser screen and you expect people to try to navigate around and understand things. It's not really that intuitive. But maybe by understanding what kind of user that person is, whether they are a power user, whether they are using it for Figma purposes, whether they're using it to watch Hulu, for example, you might be able to curate specific onboarding workflows for these specific users. How do you deliver just the right amount of protein to that user so they understand what this product can do for them in that moment? Overall, I think it's just a little bit unreasonable for a person to go figure out a whole product's history of launches, updates, bug fixes, etc. before they are able to understand what it does for them. 
especially when you're shipping bi-monthly. The issue with maximalism also is that a lot of these features that are being shipped bi-monthly are really polished and really well built. That's not the problem though. The problem is that these features are waiting to be adopted by a specific type of user. I don't really know whether the browser company, who are the guys that are building the Arc browser, I don't really know whether they are waiting for user feedback to build some of these features, or whether sometimes they just say, F it, let me just build this one feature. Like for example, the boost feature, it's just a feature that most people will not make this their 20%. Most people are not going to go to their Facebook page and the Twitter page and customize the colors, change the font. That's not what you're on the internet for. Like maybe teenage me would be doing this, but now I'm not really caring about all these things. I'm just trying to consume the content. So at the end of the year, let's say you're analyzing all the performance of your features and the boost feature is not part of the 20% of any of your category of users. What does that say about your priorities and what does that say about your allocation of resources as a company? You're allocating all your engineering efforts and your design efforts for some feature that may be used sometime by some people. I'm, I may have to walk this back because I don't know how the browser company works. Uh, I don't even know whether they have product managers. They might just be operating on product designers, engineers, and like good New York City vibes or something. But they also don't make money. So a lot of these things I feel like are very confusing when I look at this product and I know this background about this company. You don't make money and you're shipping these kind of products. Before I move to the last section, I just want to give a clear disclaimer that I now have Arc Browser on my phone and on my laptop. I don't default to them, although they are my default browsers, but I really like the team and I like the transparency that they have as a company. So it's cool to have their product on my devices. So I wanted to break down how I use my browser and I wanted to see whether the Arc Browser was optimal for any of the things that I actually do on a daily basis. And I wanted to see whether I could do my job better with the 20% of what I'm using the Arc Browser for. I did a little export of my history and I labeled each URL manually. That was since I started using Arc Browser, by the way, and slapped a little pivot table on it. And these are the things that I've done since I got the Arc Browser. Um, the main one being utility. Utility is more like Figma. Um, YouTube studio, email and stuff. Uh, the second category is entertainment. I consume YouTube like crazy. I was also watching The Bear on Hulu. Um, and then the rest is just social media, company websites, etc. Just research for my other videos. So for this specific amount of browsing, I would consider Arc for utility purposes. It works just fine. And Gmail and stuff, I can preview my email from the little pin tab there. It's neat enough, like I will give it that. You can also switch between users very seamlessly. It's way better than Google Chrome actually. So for that, that's a pretty good feature that I use daily because I don't like switching between users. YouTube analytics too, pretty good. But I wouldn't consider Arc for watching entertainment. No YouTube, no Hulu. None of that. I would actually go back to Google Chrome for those. The cool part about the browser company though is that they actually listen to user feedback and maybe I will submit an issue about the Hulu issue and the splitting the tab thingy and maybe we'll see if that gets fixed soon. All right, that was my take on the Arc browser. Again, not a review. Um, well, I'll see you next week.